you just starting with pin-up hairstyles but you've got a fringe and you're wondering if that's going to muck things up or are you a lover of vintage hairstyles but you've noticed not many of them have a fringe and you're desperate to keep yours then this is the video for you don't forget to subscribe for regular updates click the bell for notifications so you don't miss anything hello and welcome to pin-up hairstyles 101 where i give you the lowdown on everything you need to hop on that pin-up train or keep you on it i don't know what a pin-up train is it sounds kind of fun though Today we are talking about fringes and what on earth that means for pin-up hair. By the end of this video you are going to know the history of the fringe, how to conceal your fringe should you so wish to, and how to get a fringe when you really can't commit and cut it yourself. If you follow me you'll know I'm in a perpetual cycle of cutting and growing and cutting and growing and cutting and growing my fringe. I've been styling my hair in vintage styles for over 12 years now and I'm used to every single level of fringe and I know exactly what you need to do to style it in a pin-up fashion. Okay this is where I am now, about six weeks ago I cut in um, Betty Bangs but I didn't even get to the first trim before I decided nah -uh -uh, um, I don't want them. So they're about eyebrow length now and I'm just starting to be able to part them and they're just becoming that little bit more kind of malleable and pliable but I am definitely definitely growing them out. What is a Betty Bang? Well it's a U-shaped fringe that has its longest point in the centre of your forehead. It was sported by the iconic pin-up model Betty Page and many pin-ups since. Um, an amateur photographer taking pictures of Betty suggested that she cut in a short fringe to stop the light glare from the flash reflecting off of her forehead. Now it wasn't a common trend at that time but Betty herself said that she would rather not follow trends but wear what suited her and this fringe certainly did. I wholeheartedly recommend you try um, the Betty Bangs at some point if you're into pin-up styling. Okay, so I know you cut them short and they are a bit of a pain to grow out until they're at eyebrow length. But once they're at this point, they'll start to part and you can blend them in with the rest of your hair. I've only got about another month to go before I can invert the shape of these Betty Bangs into Bardo Bangs or Curtain Bangs where the longer side, the longer bit of hair is on the side and the shortest bit is in the middle. Um, these are perfect if you like that kind of sex kit and 60s vibe. Um, it also just makes the growing out process so much easier because your hair just blends into the length of your hair. It's so much less blocky uh, than just trying to grow a straight fringe out like this. The Bardo Bang has literally revolutionised me growing out my Betty Bangs. I will never be afraid to cut them in again because I know there's not one point in the growing out phase that they look terrible. If you're interested in how to cut a curtain, fringe, bardo, bang, whatever you'd like to call it, then please check out my bardo uh, half moon fringe tutorial here. Um, I'll put the link underneath this video. Is this all making sense? If it is, then please comment Betty in the comment section down below. Longer fringes, and actually shorter ones too, can be incorporated into many different pin-up styles with just a little bit of elbow grease and determination. You will generally want to be working with pre-curled hair though because it just makes your hair that little bit more malleable and willing to do what you want it to. So I've made a nice deep center, uh, side parting in my hair and from the crown of my head I'm taking a line down to the opposite uh, corner of my forehead. So I've got a great big chunk of hair at the front, much more than just my bangs. And I'm going to clip away the back section of my hair and curl this front section along with my fringe with a curling iron. Um, I'm curling one inch-ish sections and I'm rolling them all forwards. I'm using a conical curling iron here, which is not ideal. A straight barreled curling iron would be better, but this one will do, it's all I've got at the moment. In the UK we say fringe, whereas in America they use the word bang and I've been using both words interchangeably throughout this video. As I've found with most American English words, it was those that came first with the British then adapting and moving on afterwards. The word bang came from bangtail, a way of cutting a horse's tail straight across resulting in a tassel-like fringe. The first reference to bangs with regards to human hair came in the early 1800s. But people have been wearing fringes for millennia. In the 1600s, the clergy deemed any woman wearing a fringed hairstyle to be well on her way to committing a mortal sin. Madness, right? The popularity of the fringe in the modern age can be attributed to actress Louise Brooks, who also pioneered the bob hairstyle, interestingly enough. Since then, we've seen the fringe take many forms, from the aforementioned iconic Betty to Brigitte Bardot, Jane Birkin, Farrah Fawcett in the 70s, and more recently on celebrities like Alexa Chung. Please take care while you're curling your fringe. Don't burn your fingers. Make sure that you clip all of your curls. This 
part is necessary. It's very important to allow your curls to cool before you try to style them. Otherwise, they will uh, fall out as soon as you brush them, rendering this whole time pointless. I'm going to show you how to create a front roll, uh, incorporating your bangs. Uh, first, I'm going to be using a cut up bun form or bun donut. This will give stability to the roll. You put it in the ends of your hair, roll it towards your face and just incorporate your fringe as you're rolling towards your hairline. Once you've reached your hairline, just give it another twist round for stability and then use bobby pins, poke them in vertically at your hairline to really secure that form in there. Look, I've only had to put one in. I will put more in, but one will hold it nice and tightly. What you want to do is Make sure the bun form is covered and then smoosh down the side closest to your ear so that the form is completely disguised. And that's very, very stable. More bobby pins and that would be, you could jump around in that. Secondly, without the form, you're going to take a sectioning clip and just clip your fringe to the lengths of your hair so it's attached. You're then going to make a loop at the bottom of this longest part of hair and begin to roll towards your forehead, clasping with your index and middle fingers as you go. Then, just like before, you incorporate your fringe, take out the sectioning clip, and continue to roll to your forehead. Once at your hairline, keep at least one finger in that hair sausage that you've made, and you can pin it. Now, to incorporate your bangs into a swoosh or a swoop requires a little bit more work. So section your longer pieces of hair from this front section away and then you're going to, in inch sections, back comb your pre-curled fringe. You can see because I've done the front roll my curls have fallen a little bit, hopefully yours will be a little bit more curly still to hold this swoop. Back comb and spray as you see fit so that you um, look ultimately like a little bit of a crazy mad scientist with a funny mullet. You're going to back comb and back comb until you have got a certain amount of rigidity to this front section of your hair. Just keep on brushing upwards and spraying as you need to. Without disturbing the back combing too much, your hair should be quite pliable at this point, especially with the wet spray in it. I'm taking my hair, this front fringe, to the upper right hand side, the way my swoosh will go, and just holding it there until the spray dries a little. And then I'm taking the back section, the non back combed piece, and pulling it over to create that lovely pin up swoosh. I'm just tucking in my fringe as I go. Make sure that you um, tuck in any ends that might appear, and don't pull down on the swoosh, obviously. You want to keep that height there. I'm just smoothing and spraying. Don't pull down and don't comb through any more than necessary and just wait for it to dry and it's that's done now for those of you girls who love the idea of a betty bang but can't commit to the cut and i do understand i've got a little clip from a video i filmed a couple of years ago not sponsored by the way um regarding a piece or a product that i really think that you would like clip in betty bangs by classy rebel they're a 360 style bang so you get the fringe at the front and then some hair at the back to blend in and the side it has almost like a fake crown at the top, so they really are unrecognisable as clip-ins. I've had clip-in fringes before, and they have a straight track at the top, and they're really visible. You have to wear a headscarf over the top. You know, it's not ideal, but this you can just go for it with these on and, and hair down. It's like an instant Betty look. Okay, this was the final look from that video, and I have to say it makes me want to get my hot waving tongs out again, because I think this looks absolutely brilliant. You can see that the Betty Bangs... Um, I don't show the top of my head, but they really do fit in seamlessly. They're fantastic. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that this video has not only been informative, but useful for you. Don't forget to click that like button if you enjoyed it and follow the link underneath the video to all of my cheat sheets for every tutorial that I upload. Thanks so much. See you soon. Bye. Hello and welcome to Pin Up Hairstyles 101. No, cheap sheet. <laughs> Hello and welcome to... Hello and welcome to Pin Up Hairstyles 1 on 1. No.